In this episode, I'm going to show you um, one of the animation tools in Adobe Flash called Motion Tween, so that we can make like you know objects move from one place to another. So what I've got here is just the Adobe Flash welcome screen. We are going to create a new Flash file by clicking on um, Create New Flash File Action Script 3.0. And what we're going to do first is just to create a shape. So let's just create a rectangle. Okay. And at the moment I've got it on purple. Okay. Um, as you can see here, at the moment, this rectangle shape is actually two shapes because if I actually click in the middle of it and drag it out, the inside of the rectangle has separated from the borders of the rectangle. And then each line is also a separate shape as well. And since we're doing um, the motion tween tool, we can't actually do it on separate shapes. We need to do it on like one entire shape called a symbol. So I was going to undo. Okay. And to make this rectangular shape one shape, as in one symbol, we make sure we're on the selection tool. We click over both the border and the inside, and then we right click and say convert to symbol. You might not be able to see it um, at the bottom of your screen, but it is after motion path, there's an option called convert to symbol. And then it will ask you to name your symbol. So let's just um, call our symbol rectangle, and we click OK. So now this is now a symbol. So if I'm moving the square or rectangle, it moves as one piece. So what we're going to do now, for any animation, we need to work with the timeline, like the um, scenes and frames in the timeline. So my timeline at the moment is at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to double click on timeline to open it up. And I'm just going to just rename this layer, rectangle, just for good practice. And like before, because the pencil tool is next to this layer, we know we're editing the rectangle layer. I'm going to select frame 50 and then click F5 to insert the frames. You can also right click on the last frame and say insert um, frame as well. Or just click frame or just click F5, sorry. They both do the same thing. Okay, so now see how these is grayed out in the timeline. It means that all these frames have been filled with the same shape, the purple square. So to make a motion tween, we have to just make sure we select um, the last frame, which in our case is frame 50. I'm going to say click on insert and select motion tween. Okay, And making sure that our last frame is still selected, I'm going to move the square across to the right. See how now the um, frames in the timeline has changed to blue? That indicates that a motion tween has been um, um, put into there. And see how you've also got this green line here. Okay, so this the left green dot shows you where the shape has originated, and the last green dot shows you where the shape ends. So if I just scrub my timeline, I can see that my purple square is moving from left to right. I can do other stuff um, with the motion tween as well, because at the moment it's pretty boring, just moving from left to right. Making sure that the last scene is still selected, I'm going to select my rectangle symbol, like that, um, right click, actually select the symbol, go to windows and click on properties to open up the properties panel. If you look at color effect, at the moment I've got none color effect, but I can um, click on the arrow and say let's just do tint, okay, I can increase my tint to like 83%, close it, and then if I scrub my timeline again, you can see that it starts off um, as a very dark purple rectangle. It moves from left to right, but as it does so, it goes to a brighter purple and it becomes a bit pinkish and eventually fades to a very transparent purple rectangle. I can also do other color effects. So let's get our properties panel up again. Um, I can do alpha. Alpha is a particularly good one because it actually basically lets you select how much percentage of the object do you want to show? So if I have 0% alpha, that means I've got 0% of the purple rectangle showing. That means that it has basically disappeared. So if I go back to the beginning and I scrub my timeline again, it goes from light, light, light purple all the way to nothing. So you can make things disappear, which is actually quite useful um, for animations. 
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually go to try to rotate the shape, I'll rotate the object and also change the shape of the object as well. So if I click on the object, making sure it's on the last frame, right click and select free transform. This will give me all these handlebars showing me that I can actually manipulate the object somehow. I can make it spin, okay, like rotate this way, make it a bit bigger, like that. Okay, maybe let's move it down a little bit so everything is in the white part of the stage. So now if I go back to the beginning, I can see that my purple square is growing, is moving as well, and it is also rotating all the way and then it disappears. The last thing I want to show you is um, a tool called Onion Frames. If you look at the bottom of your timeline here, you can see there's like you no know, frames per second. There's all these little buttons here. On this button, it is called Onion Skin. Okay, so if I click on Onion Skin, you will see these Onion Skin handlebars appear. What I'm going to do is going to move it back here. Okay, see how if I open up the Onion Screen, I'm um, sorry, Onion um, Skin all the way to frame 50. You can see how the purple rectangle has moved. It basically shows you all the frames that's gonna happen in the future as you move into it. So you can actually change it. So if I close my onion skin so that it goes, goes to frame five, if I scrub the timeline, it just shows you like five frames in advance of where it is going to go. So that if you're doing a very complex animation and you're trying to change the object, the first frame for example, you can change it knowing where the object is gonna go in the